There's no place like home. There's no place like home. Uh, about two, three weeks ago, um, I got to go back to New Zealand because I got to visit my grandmother. My grandmother is 98 years old. Uh, she's still alive. Um, I got the phone call that she was suffering. Uh, she had pneumonia. Okay. In the last 12 months, uh, she's suffered a stroke. Uh, she's had pneumonia and she's had cancer. Okay. So it seems like that generation will not give up. They're the fighting generation. Okay. They just won't give up. My generation, you get a cough. They'd be like, we call them up. Call the ambulance. I'm dying. You know. <laughs> The VIX is not working. So, you know, but their generation is strong. And I got the phone call saying she might not make it. Now, when I quickly jumped on the plane, went to New Zealand, because my, my grandmother holds a special place in my heart, like a lot of grandmothers for you guys. Like, because my grandmother raised me when I was seven. She told me how to ride a bike. And when she told me how to ride a bike, she didn't <laughs> teach me how to put the brakes on. So she'll aim for the bushes to break my fall. <laughs> That's what she's do to help me because I had no training wheels or anything like that. And, and where I'm born, I'm born from New Zealand. Okay, you know the All Blacks Amen. that won the yes, thank you Nathan, they won the World Cup. Yes, because they had Jesus. That's why they won the World Cup. Okay, the Wallabies will continue to pray for the Wallabies uh, because they just want to be. Okay, but the All Blacks. I went back home and I made a promise to my family that I will come back every two years to New Zealand to visit my family. When I moved to Adelaide, it's my fourth year in Adelaide, I broke that promise. Because when I got that phone call, it was three years the last time I went back. So I rushed back home. And where this uh, sermon really touched my heart, uh, has a meaning for me, there is no place like home. Where is home for you? Home for me is New Zealand, but home for me is also here in Adelaide. Home for me is with Jesus as well. And hopefully I can share that with the message uh, with you uh, today. Right. Nathan taught me something using his iPad. Very good. Um, our passage for today comes from Luke chapter 15, verse 11 to 32. Uh, God's word goes like this. To illustrate the point further, Jesus told him this story, okay? A man had two sons. How many sons did he have? Two. two. Very good. The youngest son told his father, I want my share of your estate now before you die. So his father agreed to divide his wealth be between his sons. A few days later, this younger son packed all his belongings and moved to a distant land. Maybe it was Porcasta, I don't know. Okay, moved to a distant land. And there he wasted all his money in wild living and eating KFC and McDonald's. And about this time, uh, his money ran out and a great famine swept over the land and he began to starve. Now he just joined the chip program. Now he persuaded a local farmer to hire him and the man. And the young man became so hungry. Is that right? Yep. So hungry that even the parts he was feeding the pigs looked good to him, but no one gave him anything. When he finally came to the census, he said to himself, At home, even the high servants have food enough to spare, and here I am dying of hunger. I will go home to my father and say, Father, I have sinned against both heaven and you. And I am no longer worthy of being called your son. Please take me as your hired servant. So he returned home to his father. And while he was still a long way off, his father saw him coming, filled with love and compassion. He ran to his son. He embraced him and kissed him. His son said to him, Father, I have sinned against both heaven and you, and I am no longer being called your son. But his father said to his servants, Quick, quick, bring the finest robe in the house and put it on him. Get a ring for his finger and sandals for his feet and kill the calf we have been fattening. We must 
celebrate. What is this key word here? What is it? Celebrate with a feast. For this son of mine was dead and has now returned to life. He was lost, but now he is found. So the party began. They had a party. Meanwhile, the oldest son was in the fields working. When he returned home, he heard music and dancing in the house. And he asked one of the servants, what is going on? The servant said, your brother is back, he was told. And your father has killed the fattened calf. We are celebrating. What is this word again? Celebrating. Because of a safe return. The older brother was angry and wouldn't go in. His father came out and he begged him. But he replied, all these years I have slaved for you and never once re re refused to do a single thing you told me to. And in all that time you never gave me even one young goat for a feast with my friends. Yet when this son of yours comes back after squandering your money on prostitutes, you celebrate. What is that word? Celebrate. By killing the fattened calf. His father said to him, look. Dear son, you have always stayed by me, and everything I have is yours. We had to celebrate this happy day, for your brother was lost, but now he is found. Thank you, Pastor John. Okay, there is no place like home. I want to share something with you. The man had how many sons? Two, amazes me. There's always one black sheep in the family, right? The one, that's the naughty one in the family. And can someone get the son, please? <laughs> Sorry, Port Augusto, we just broke your wires. Okay. The youngest son, he, he was tired of working so hard that he wanted to live a life of his own. It amazes me the generation, the younger generation. Because when they want to move out, they want to be independent. They want to have their own life. They want to have their own room. They want to do everything that they want to do. But guess what? For them, there is no place like home. Because they always come back to mommy and daddy's house. They go, Mom and Dad, I'm hungry. I got no food in the house. You know? They'll go out for the whole week. And they come back, Mom and Dad, can you wash my clothes, please? The <laughs> truth. You wonder why, if you're going to go, go and then come back and annoy your parents anymore. <laughs> but there is no place like home. Because our parents always have the door open for the kids. Because they love the kids. Amen, church? Yes. That's why the doors are always open. And our young people say, Oh, I'm so hungry. Can I have $10, please? My brother is 40 years old, and he still does that with my parents. Okay? I hope you understand my sense of humor. I come from New Zealand, okay? This is the way that I am. Okay? And what happens is, he goes and he has an awesome time. You see, with money comes with your entourage. You have your friends. They're not your friends because you're cool. They're not your friends because... Oh man, he, he must be a gangster, you know? They're your friends because they know you have money. In the story, when the boy ran out of money, what happened? Where was his friends? They were gone. And then the poor boy, he has to go and find a job because there's a famine. And while he's working, he, go, he, he gets down to the lowest of his lowest and work with pigs. The culture, the Judaism culture is, because he was a Jewish boy, working with pigs is the, is the worst thing you can ever do because pigs are unclean. And because there was no food, he was like starving himself. It was like he was going to eat the pods of the food, the Bible is telling us. But as he goes home, he realizes, I know I spent all the money. I know I have no friends. I think I had some fun, but I really want to go home where I'm safe. 
So he decides, this is the worst job I could ever have. But I can always go home to my father. So he decides to go. And as he goes home, there his father, he looks out and he sees his son run, uh, walking by, stumbling along. Now his dad, the culture is, it is the son that's supposed to run to the father. But it's reversed. It is the father who runs to the son. Now, you, you guys know Pastor Roland? You know, Salmon culture? Yeah, that's, that's me. We're all related. All Salmons are related. Okay, in my culture, when you run to your parents, you get a hiding, you get a slap in the back of the head. Okay, but in the Bible, the father, he runs and he hugs and kisses his son. And when the son is trying to explain, I'm sorry that I sinned against you, the father does not care because he just goes, hey, servants, go get the robe, go get the ring, go get the food, and let's have a feast. When I got back from New Zealand about two weeks ago, I told my wife, my plane arrives at 10.30. I'll probably walk out of the gates by 11. And my wife says, no worries, we'll be there. My, you know, our son will be there. We'll, you know, we'll come and celebrate your return. I arrived in LA Airport, get through customs. I looked at the time, almost 11. As I walk out, I was expecting for my, for my wife and my son to have a sign in the air, Welcome home, Daddy. I walked out of the airport and there was no one there. And I ring. She didn't pick up. I look around. Maybe she's standing somewhere looking for me. I look around. I still can't find my wife and my son because I'm, I'm expecting a sign to say, Welcome home, Daddy. No sign. I ring up again. She picks up the phone. I go, where are you? She goes, I'm half an hour away. I'm stuck in traffic. And I was like, oh no, that's not a welcome. <laughs> in the story of the prodigal son, the father is who? It's God. It's Jesus. Jesus is coming for us. He will run to us. Because he loves us so much. And he treats everyone the same. Amen, church? Amen. I want to share with you a diff another story. To give you another point of view here. There was a boy. He was a cute boy. That's me. <laughs> I, I, that was me. A lot has changed. I had some Botox and plastic surgery. I just got old and wrinkly face. Like I said, I share with you, I, I was born and raised in Auckland, New Zealand by my grandmother. By the time I hit seven, my parents made the worst choice of their lives to bring us to Australia. <laughs> and there they brought my older brother and myself to Australia, away from our family, because we were very family orientated. We loved our family. We still do love our family. And when we came to Australia, it was a culture shock. And when it became a culture shock, my brother and I started to play out. My brother used to get into trouble a lot. In school, he used to go and steal stuff at Woolies, and he used to teach me how to steal. So, you know, when I didn't have lunch, I'll go to Woolies and put chocolates under my jumper and go to school. It wasn't until um, the cops caught us that my mum, you know, taught us something else, how not to steal. <laughs> and that'll come in the story, okay? But I was seven when I left New Zealand and I had to go back when my grandfather got sick with cancer and he died in 1988. And um, by the time I hit 10, 11, and we were living in Australia, um, I was so homesick because I, I was just so upset at my parents for taking us away from New Zealand. Some of you may, may know that. What is it like to be taken away from your family who you love so much? And where you've gone to a place, a new culture, where you have no friends and no family around you. So as we're living here, I used to watch this program. Religiously, I loved this program. Okay? There were the Ninja Turtles. I used to watch the Ninja Turtles every day because oh, I love the Ninja Turtles. I want to fight like them. I want to eat pizza like them. You know? 
I'll, I'll get my mom to buy me the weapons and I'll run around the house and I'll throw it at my brother and he'll chase me around the room. I'll do all these things, mimic the moves, just like Ninja Turtle. And then my mom, she goes, son, turn off the TV, please. We're going to have worship. I said, oh, wait, mom, wait. It's coming to the good part. Please, mom, wait. My mom went. In our culture, my mom, my parents, said, the Samoan culture is this. We only say it once. Because the second time, you get a ninja turtle. Okay? So she came back. She goes, son, turn off the TV. I thought, oh, okay, mom, okay, mom, I will, I will. And, and, and I was about to turn it off, and she walked away. I said, like, oh, I didn't, I didn't get a smack. So I turned off, and come on, ninja turtles, fight! And I was fighting. And again, my mom came out and said, son, turn the TV off. And I was like, it was coming towards the end, you know, when you watch a movie and, and the, they're going to win and you want to see the last part. I turned to my mom, I said, wait, wait, woman, I'm watching TV. And she said to me, say it again, say it again. <laughs> this is my mom. Four years ago, she was diagnosed with cancer. Uh, she's still alive. She, uh, she, was, she managed to fight that cancer and she's still alive. Uh, she looks like a sweet woman, but when she gets angry, she becomes one of the ninja turtles. <laughs> in our house, in the island culture, my mom likes to have uh, these things, these island things to decorate the house. Some of you may understand what I'm trying to say here. Okay? They look like this. Okay? They look beautiful, right? That is part of our culture, right? And but my brother and I, we, we both knew. We said, Mom, you need to bring that down, okay? Because we know it's not for decorations. It's for to chase us around the house and spank us with it. So when I screamed at my mom, she got these decorations off the wall and she chased me around the house. And I was like, please, Mom, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And as I was running around the house, my brother was like, get him, mom, get him, mom, get him. And my older brother stopped me, threw me on the ground, and said, okay, mom, now get him. And she goes, you want to watch Ninja Turtles, huh? You want to watch Ninja Turtles? And my mom gave me a Ninja Turtle of my life. And as my mom finished disciplining me, you know, in, in Australian culture, we say, go to your room, think about it. In the island culture, we say, you know, <laughs> in, in, in Australian culture, I, I, I've I got to learn that it was a time out. Is that right? It's a time out here. In the island culture, we say it's knock out. Okay? <laughs> so Australian culture, time out. Island culture, knock out. Okay? So that's what happened to me. I got a knock out. And after I picked myself up, I said, I'm not going to live here anymore. I'm going to run back to New Zealand. So I go up to my mum. I put on my Ninja Turtle costume on. And I said to my mom, Mom, I hate you. I don't want you anymore. And, and as I was saying that, I was so angry. I said, I was so determined that I was going to ride my bike back to New Zealand. So I ran out of the house because by the time she got it, she goes, what did you say? You want another Ninja Turtle? <laughs> as she got out, I jumped, I ran out of the house, jumped on my bike. I had a green bike, just like this. My Harley Davidson bike. <laughs> And I was riding, and I was crying. <laughs> I don't want to stay here anymore. I'm going to ride my bike to New Zealand. And I thought New Zealand was the next suburb. I couldn't find New Zealand. You know, I was only 10, 11 years old. So I was riding my bike round and round, and I didn't know where to go. So you, and I went to um, one of my friend's house. My wife is related to, you, you may know Pastor Lani. You, you met Pastor Lani, yes. I went to Pastor Lange's house. There I went, and I was hiding there. I went to his house. This is Pastor Lange's house back in the day. It was at the back of his house. And there we were playing games. I said, Pastor Lange, I said, Lange, no, I don't want to go home. I miss my family. There's no place like home. And Lange said, don't worry, don't cry, man up. I'll go and talk to my parents, see if you can stay here. So Pastor Lange, he goes, and he, after playing dress-ups, he goes and he asks his mum and dad, can I stay here? 
And his parents said no, that he needs to go back home because that's where he belongs. And I was so upset. I said, Lonnie, you just stay in your air balloon dress, okay? You're not my friend anymore. So I jumped back on my bike and I started riding around the block. And as I was riding and it was getting dark, it was the first time I've ever ran away from home. And I was only away from home for about two hours. That's all. This happened. And as I was riding my bike, it brought me back to my house. And I remember my grandmother saying to me before I left New Zealand as a little boy, she said these things to me. She said, son, honor your mother and father. No matter what happens, remember they love you. And if you ever get stuck, don't forget to pray. So I stopped my bike and I started to pray. I did a prayer that my grandmother taught me. And as I was praying, I was also praying that, you know, even though I've hurt my mom by saying I hate her, even though I ran away from home, I said to God, God, help me to find a way to come back home. So after that, I felt the Holy Spirit just in me, just saying, Travis, just go back home. There is no place like home. Your mum and dad loves you. I had this in my head. I said, all right, I'm, I'm going to try and go home. No matter what happens, I'm going to face it. So this is, I went, and this is the, my house. It was a big white house where I used to live, okay? You, have, you may see it somewhere, like in America. But I had a same, similar house like that here in Australia. And as I was riding my bike round and round, I noticed something. That my window is open. I can go and sneak through the window. You know, we've all done that, right? Us older ones, you know, when we were younger. So I went to the window and it was locked. I was like, oh no, my mum knows the tricks. So I come to the front door and there the light was, was on. I said, I'm just going to go in. So I go and open the door, put my head in, looked around. I said, wow, the coast is clear. And as I was getting ready to go in, there my mum stood with tears in her eyes and a nice brand new red broomstick. <laughs> and I was like, oh, were you sweeping the floor tonight, mum? She goes, I've been waiting for you. <laughs> and before I was getting into that mode of, I'm sorry, mum. She didn't even listen to that. She just grabbed me. She hugged me. And she said, I love you, son. Welcome home. And then after that, she gave me the hiding of my life. <laughs> and she said, son, I'm only doing this because I love you. <laughs> okay, but don't try this at home, okay? It's different. Now, this is about 10, 15 years ago. Today, you do that, you call the cops, okay? But this is what happened. This is the way I was brought up. Love. Love. Friends, Jesus is love. There are some of you who are running away from your problems. There might be some of you are searching and thinking to yourself, how can I come home? Simple. You have people here at this church that love you. Pastor, Pastor John's family, they, they, just, they just open their arms and just want you to come back home. If there's anyone here going through a tough time, connect with people. Tell them, come home. Jesus is waiting for you. He will run to you. He just wants to just grab you and just hug you and kiss you. Don't fight it. Just let the Holy Spirit take over. There's no place like home when you come to Jesus. Amen, church? This is a picture of my grandmother before I left New Zealand. 98 years old. And when I said goodbye to her, I said, Mama, I love you. Because I knew that was the last time I was going to see her alive. Because the next time will be when she's sleeping. I owe a lot to this woman. She has been a rock for me, taught me everything. And she, I remember she used to have the TV on, watch Bewitch and Genie, and read the Bible while the TV is on. This lady here at 98 years old will pray 
all day for hours and hours for blessings on her kids. She had 12 kids. And out of those 12 kids, there's, there's, I have over 200 cousins. We're like the children of Israel. Just keep growing and growing. She will used to pray for everyone and anyone in our family. This taught me something. To have a prayer list. And to pray for my church folk. And to pray for those that are lost that want to come back to Jesus. The challenge here, friends, it's never too late. Jesus is waiting. Amen, church? Amen. In Jesus' name, this is my prayer and the challenge for you today. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, we know that you will take care of us wherever we go, whatever we do. We know that you love us and you will forgive us. May we remember you and help us to come back home when we're lost. And I just pray for forgiveness of our sins. Bless this church here at Port Augusta. Bless their ministries that they're doing here. And thank you for all that you've done. Help us have hope that we have you in our lives. Thank you, Jesus. In your name, as we pray. Amen.